Hello and welcome to this phone call catch up with the gaffer. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm well, Luke. Thank you. How are you? I'm um, good, thank you. Well, we've obviously, since our last interview at the start of this month, we've had uh, a few outgoings. Jack Senior, Key and Spence making the step up into League Two with Doncaster Rovers and, and Barrow. And of course, Harvey Gilmore has, uh, has joined fellow National League side Rochdale. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So, um, uh, grateful for all of their service over varying degrees of time. I mean, uh, Jack Senior will start with, I think, has been a, a great servant for the club. and. Um, I know it wasn't an easy decision for Jack, although we did just have a chat at the end of the season where you know we we'd made a number of offers to Jack before the end of the season, and he was just mindful that he wanted to see what other interest did come in, and um, we were we were agreed that if it were anything other than a big League Two club, then he was going to commit and, and give another couple of years service to Halifax Town, which is where his heart lay, obviously. Um, but um, but now Doncaster's a big club. It's um, they've got an excellent chance of progressing in League Two under uh, a fantastic manager, very uh, successful and experienced manager, and, and ultimately he couldn't resist that opportunity. And uh, and, uh, and uh, you know he goes with our our best wishes, and we'll be uh, we'll be wishing him well from afar right throughout the season. Um, uh, yeah, other lads that we've uh, we've seen uh, go. Harvey uh, obviously off to Rochdale uh, yeah, again. You know he's he's done great for us this year, and, and personally, I would have loved to have seen him give it another year. And I think had he had he give us another year, we might have been waving him goodbye at the end of uh, this coming season to a, a Doncaster or a similar uh, club of a similar stature. But um, I think the, the the financials that Rochdale offered. Were too uh, too too strong to resist. So um, again, thanks to Harvey, and we wish him all the best. But uh, um, not uh, we hope he doesn't do as well as we do this season. So we'll see how that pans out. And and obviously, Keen off to Barrow. So uh, you know he's uh, um, he's got the league two move, and uh, and we wish him the best for the coming season. I'm sure it'll be a great success there. And look, moving on and looking at the new additions that we've uh, already brought into the into the club, Kane Thompson Summers was our first signing this summer. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, Kane's a, a good young lad, uh, 22 years old, box to box midfielder, left footed, uh, good engine on him. Um, at his best, he's very very good, and, and what we want to do is is help him perform at those higher levels more consistently, and we think uh, we'll have a fantastic uh, young player on our hands. So. Uh, exciting prospect, and I think um, over the course of this season, the fans will, will really grow to enjoy watching Kane perform. And of course, one player that we signed that we already knew a, a fair amount about, Adam Senior, securing on securing him on a permanent deal. Yeah, it's tough for Adam, isn't it? Because he's he set such good standards this season. Um, this se the season just gone in in the sense that his performances were of such a, uh, a consistently high level that he's, he's he's got a high bar to now maintain but um but he's on a number of levels it's a really good signing he's a great lad he's very ambitious he's very professional uh he's really well liked around the group and clearly we've seen what he can deliver out on the pitch so we're very fortunate to have managed to secure that uh, uh, that signature and of course our, our most recent signing ryan galvin uh, what can you tell us about him ryan's another one who Similar sort of mould to uh, to the sort of good lads we've got around the place, you know, the, the Adam Seniors, the Tyler Goldens, those sort of consistent, reliable type of lads. He's somebody who was flagged up to us at the beginning, well, this time last year, and uh, we we were uh, we had the opportunity to sign him on loan, and we weren't looking at loan signings at that time, so it didn't happen. Um, but we've monitored him right throughout the season. We've, we know a lot about his background. We know a lot of people who've worked with him and played with him uh, in recent years. And uh, we know that he'll just fit the bill uh, really well for Halifax Town. Um, again, of that kind of profile where he's, he's, he's still got a bit to prove. He's got a, a point to prove to those outside the club. We, we inside Halifax Town certainly know what he can deliver. Um, but he's now got something to prove to those outside the club. And, and I'm, uh, I expect we'll benefit from that as the season goes on so we're really looking forward to working with Ryan. Of course since the uh, since the last interview we've also had a few few new contracts signed Tom Scott being one of them and then of course Sam Johnson who was uh, announced earlier this afternoon. Yes 
Yeah, Sam. <laughs> Sam. Sam was actually agreed a while back, but he's uh, he's he's had an awfully long holiday. He's been on the other side of the world for a good few weeks. So, um, getting the paperwork signed had to wait, and then obviously other people had holidays within the club as well, which made it a little bit of a, a challenge getting the paperwork done as quickly as we would have liked. But it's done. It's dusted. Everyone can relax. Um, so we're uh, we're delighted to have Sam in the building again. He, he's his ability as a goalie, his presence as a as a player, his, his experience as a player, um, really reassuring for the rest of the group and fantastic going into the beginning of this season. Uh, Tom Scott, he's he's one who uh, fans don't know an awful lot about, but he, he does a uh, an incredible job um, supporting and pushing Sam. Um, he's a fantastic young keeper and don't get anywhere near the kind of recognition and the praise that he should do uh, it's, it's one of the hardest roles in the club especially when you've got a, a player like Sam Johnson uh, ahead of you because Sam just doesn't miss games so it, it's, it's a, a real mark of, of what a, a top player Tom is that he, he maintains his levels, he maintains his motivation he continues to work hard he provides that level of support and pressure for Sam but he also provides a level of uh, difficulty for the outfield players within training sessions so um so tom's a, a really you know a, a key but quiet unsung part of the uh, squad that um, i'm really pleased to have rejoining us again for the coming season and of course there's one player that obviously we've, we've mentioned several times throughout these interviews in the past that uh, still no real update on uh, max Wright. do we have any update on him at the minute yeah, well, Max, again, not dissimilar situation to Sam Johnson in some respects. I know you guys in the media team will, uh, will hopefully have some news in the next, well, uh, not too far down the line, I would imagine. But uh, we've had we had some really positive talks with Max early on, and then uh, that's been a little bit broken up by various holidays for, for various people, which is, a um, you know, it happens at this time of year, doesn't it? So... Um, so I'm really hopeful that Max will be with us next season and, and certainly I expect that to be the case and and uh, I, I wouldn't imagine it'll be too far down the line that uh, we'll be in a position to make an official announcement on that. It's good to hear and, and looking at sort of future signings, what sort of positions and, uh, and players are you still looking at? Yeah, well, we've got some exciting op options now um, higher up the pitch. Uh, we've got um, a little bit more... Uh, numbers across the middle of the park when you think about the, the options we've got at both um, uh, wide areas, full backs and wing back positions. Um, we've got a little bit in the uh, defensive department we might need to look at adding in there but what we also have there is some really exciting prospects who are coming in to train with us in the first week or two of pre-season so we're, we're not in any desperate rush to sign in those areas but we do have some players that we're very very keen uh, to look at and we will make decisions on very quickly so yeah listen if we can uh, if we can make sure that we've got enough goals in the team if we can just add a little bit in the engine room and then make sure that we've got a player or two coming in to, to support and make sure the defence is strong enough then we'll start the season in a fantastic place but we're certainly not a million miles off if we make two maybe three more signings um, we'll be in a very strong position I'm sure that's, uh, that's going to be very reassuring for the fans who I'm sure you can understand are maybe a little frustrated at the speed in which these transfers do get confirmed and announced, especially compared to some other clubs. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, we, what the, the fans need to understand is it, it is a process that, that's ongoing for a long period. We were talking at Kane Thompson Summers for months before the end of the season, or we were certainly aware of him and talking to his agent for months before the end of the season. That was something that uh, we were uh, trying to understand the position on. Um, Ryan Galvin, another player who we were monitoring and we'd made some uh, contact with uh, his previous club over a number of weeks before the end of the season to understand his position. Um, and, you know, we do an awful lot of work in preparation for the end of the season. Now, when this happens, obviously, then you've got holidays that get thrown into the mix. Players want to have a bit of downtime. Agents want to just make sure that the, there aren't any other offers that are uh, that are pressing that are going to be any better for their player at this time. And and what we've also got to remember is the competition we've got geographically now. So not only have we got you know teams who used to 
being our kind of ballpark financially. So the Gateheads, the Altringhams of the world, who who used to sort of compete with us financially, are all throwing more money at it. So that's be, become more competitive. You'll see some of the signings they've made where they've paid players significantly more than we could think of paying them. And in some cases, I, I believe Altringham are now paying transfer fees. So. You know, you can imagine the the uplifting uh, competition they're providing. Then geographically, we've obviously got Rochdale, Oldham, even Fylde. I know they're not on our doorstep, but they are recruiting from a similar type of geographical area. So that makes it more competitive. So it's getting more and more challenging every year. And and, and as a and as a club, we aren't going to just go out and, and throw money at people to get them over the line early doors. We want people who are hungry. Who see the value of being at Halifax Town? Who understand that you know nobody's going to become a millionaire through playing for Halifax Town. But what they might do is, if they make the right kind of financial sacrifices, they're going to get an opportunity. They're going to get coached. They're going to get the chance to play at the Shea, and um, they're going to get a chance to play um, in a in a at a club that's ambitious and wants to move forward. But it's also going to provide them with a platform to potentially move on, as you know. Jack Senior into League Two, great move to Doncaster. Kean's gone to uh, Barrow. You've got other players over recent years. That Niall and Greeny went to Grimsby a year ago. We had Billy Waters and Tyrell move off to Barrow. So players don't generally leave us and, and go backwards. They tend to leave us and go forwards. So we have to bang the drum for that. And it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a quick process signing people because um, other, other teams may just play on the uh, uh, a player's desire for more money. We have to understand the player and make sure that uh, that they fit the bill for us rather than us just being able to um, persuade them to come and play at Halifax because we give them more money than somebody else does. That's not how I would want to operate, even if we were able to. And of course, uh, pre-season testing, I believe that starts uh, at the end of this week. It does, yeah. We've got pre-season testing Thursday and Friday. Um, we have a, um, a, a good relationship with the, uh, some of the uh, staff at Leeds back at university who, uh, whose facilities we're, we're very fortunate to use. Um, so that'll take place Thursday and Friday. Uh, that'll be all the existing signings. We'll even include one or two of the promising trialists in that process because we want to be able to test them against the current squad. And, uh, and then we'll be back right into the thick of it as of Monday. And uh, next week will be the, 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 the first week of full pre-season training where the lads really go at it. I'm sure, I'm sure it feels good to, to finally be back in action in that respect then. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's, it's interesting actually because I was just saying to somebody a few minutes ago, the um, you know, it's kind of like that period of the, of the, of the uh, preparations now where you kind of just want to get back at it. We've got... Um, um, we've got a, a decent number of players signed and ready to go. Uh, we've got quite an exciting squad to begin working with. We've got a good number of decent trialists to look at, and so it's you know it's the bit now where you, you kind of just want to get going and get back at it so that we can get our preparation started and, and start moving in earnest towards the beginning of the season. That's perfect. Thank you for your time, Gaffer. Not at all, mate. Thank you.